I think it naturally would get there without the financing, just because I think more and more people are realizing you're going to burn out if you're all things to all people. And it's a lot easier. You know, we were talking before the call. It's a lot easier to bring your skills together and amplify what you do. And it's so much more impactful with less stress because you're not trying to learn SEO and do SEO and and also do social and also do, you know, all of these other things. It's like we understand businesses need all of these things. We also understand we can't be that for every single business. Hi, welcome to another episode. I'm your host, Brian Maddox. With me today, Victoria Richardson. Welcome, Victoria. Thank you for having me. Um, if you could tell us a little bit more about your business, AI advertising, how you got into it, uh, and kind of what you're doing in the marketing front, that would be super helpful for our listeners to get up to speed. Yeah. Okay. So AI advertising is an AI-powered uh, advertising agency. And so I got into it a few years ago, um, but I did get my degree in college in public relations and advertising. Um, but I graduated in 07 and it was the crash and it was like, you were lucky to find a job. And I ended up getting a job at a company called Ecolab. I thought it was a sales position, but it was really like, I was like a glorified dish machine mechanic, um, which is very interesting. A lot of people are like, you did what? So I installed commercial dish machines for like three years and sold soap and like installed cleaning materials. I hated it. Did a lot of retail therapy. Had my what I call quarter life crisis. And I was like, I got to get out of here. I don't know what to do. I can't do this. Um, was very unsure of what I wanted to do. Um, took all the personality assessments as you do, you know, trying to find your way. <laughs> At least I did. <laughs> right. And then um, basically went to a to a coaching session and he's like, well, no wonder you hate your job. You're like very opposite from, you know, a typical profile that would would thrive in that position. Um, and so I ended up actually getting a job at Yelp for a while as an account manager, um, went from Yelp to a PR agency, went from a PR agency to a uh, a branding and advertising agency. Um, and our team actually at the time was in Argentina. So it was just me and my boss here kind of running the States. My whole team was abroad. And so I worked with them on all of my projects. So it was really cool to be able to kind of leverage different teams in different places. Um, and then after that, I went internal marketing for one of my clients. And I loved being on the brand side. I thought I loved agencies and I was like, I'm never going to the brand. I love, you know, the thrill of agencies and being able to work on different things. And I kind of looked at it as like this little golden door that I was never really going to go through. And then I went through it and I was like, I love this. And so um, after that, let's see, I got recruited as a marketing manager for a uh, commercial real estate firm. So uh, on their corporate marketing team, Worked in commercial real estate for a few years, and I was like, I don't like this. And so, <laughs> why? <laughs> several reasons. Mostly, I had a very uh, grandiose, narcissistic boss at the time, and I. It took me a while to realize that because I, I tend to trust people. So um, I was like, oh, I see what's going on. The goalposts always changed, and I was always, you know, striving to achieve and. I knew I was really good at my job and she was basically, you're not good at your job, but I was like, I'm still performing and I'm really confused. It was very like disorienting. Um, and so I quit without having anything lined up because I was like, I, I, I know I can't do this. And so then I, I was in San Diego a few years ago and I got a call from a recruiter and it was for the job I'm in now. So he was like, is now a good time to talk? And I was like, yeah, I've only had two margaritas. It's might as well. Yeah, yeah, right. Like so, perfect. I, uh, took an interview with him, and then quickly, like you know, went through the interview process, got hired, um, and that was about two and a half years ago now, almost three years ago. Uh, and so I'm director of marketing at AI Advertising. So it's fun because I'm on the brand side, but I'm in an agency, and so it's kind of like the best of both worlds of what I love. Um, and so I get to work on 
all the different projects for our company. I get to support sales and I get to do, you know, SEO and I get to do social and I get to do website and I had a team and now we're kind of transitioning and doing more partnership stuff. And so I'm now, I'm super passionate about people and empowering individuals. And so I'm kind of moving into that realm, which is really interesting because it's kind of the flip side of of brand, you know, and so it's the culture of the company. And, and so that is the high and the low of it. So when you talked about, and, and I think we spoke previously um, about how you are leveraging these different teams and moving to more of a partnership model. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, I think there's a couple of places I think we can go to, to really suss some of that out. One is how do you build a culture with teams that you don't effectively directly report to you? And then, yeah. um, uh, so, so I want to get to that, but but I want to table that for one second and get to what was the deciding sort of factor that made you uh, you guys decide that um, you wanted to go to more like outsourcing sales, outsourcing you know so many of these different business functions. How did you yeah. decide to do that? So at the time, actually, we had hired a team of salespeople, and. Um, to help them get leads, we outsourced the lead gen part of it. And so partnered with a company called Amplifier. Um, they, I'm sorry, I have chickens and she just like jumped up on top of my batting cage. She'll figure it out. Um, <laughs> kind of distracting. So at the time, you know, they, we were kind of new in our new branding. We were new to kind of the the way we were going to be doing business in the future. We had gotten a few different companies. They were rebranding. They were repositioning in the market. Um, we really didn't have anything to support salespeople. Uh, so they ended up hiring this agency to help them just generate leads so that they could do presentations and start to close clients. Um what we shortly found out was that really that was the wrong model for us. Um, we really weren't set up in a way to support internal salespeople. Uh, we kind of needed to take it a little slower. And so we dissolved that team. Um, it took about a year after that. And then I brought on Amplifier full time to do lead gen and sales follow up all the way through contract close. And so Uh, It's been a really amazing partnership for us because they're so entrenched in our business and they've been working with us for so long, both with the salespeople and now kind of internally with us. Um, They're really invested in our success because they're compensated, obviously, for that. Um, But they also are complementary to us, right? So it's like our strengths work really well together. Um, they're a really seasoned, you know, sales organization that can really optimize sales and they know how to open, you know, get people to open cold emails. And they've been doing this for so long and that's really their area of expertise. And so it's been a really awesome experience to partner with a trusted organization and agency to come alongside of us and then see that growth and momentum um, kind of culminate, right? And so now we're in the position where that's going really well. They're doing great for sales. We're meeting our you know budgets and all the things or um, forecasts. And now we're getting in with these clients where, you know, we can take a certain angle on their business. We can do all of their programmatic and their advertising and their landing pages and their branding and their creative. But there's obviously so much more to marketing, right? Like there's email and there's social and there's um, direct and there, you know, so we're the agency that really specializes in the digital part of things, um, using AI to target the people that actually matter instead of just like glittering your ads everywhere. It's like, you know, we right. we really try to find the people and talk to them in the way that um, will convert business for you. And our, our methodology is really, eventually we want to work ourselves out of a job, right? We want to work ourselves to the point of we've gotten you all of these clients. You now have a personal relationship with them. You're building that um, trust and that authority within your network. You're getting them to be your word of mouth advertisers and you're not needing to do so much advertising. And so we're really ushering our clients through that process. Um, You know, obviously 
their budgets always are increasing because they like what we're doing, right? But at the same time, going to this par- partnership model, we were lucky enough to have an investor come in. He's investing in other organizations that are compatible to ours. And so we've made these connections uh, that maybe we probably wouldn't have necessarily, but these other organizations that specialize in influencer marketing, right? Like that's all that they do. And so if we have a client come in or they have a client come in, it's a really awesome partnership to say, hey, we can do this, but if you need this service, like we have a partner for that. And so we're we're always kind of trading back and forth and, and plugging in where it makes sense. And I prefer it because it's almost like a build your own menu kind of thing where it's like we're not trying to be all things to all people but we have really trusted partners that are really really good at what they do that we can plug you in with and we'll run all of it so it becomes really easy for our clients because they're not having to manage multiple agencies right. Right? it's like we'll do all of that we'll kind of serve as the hub of the wheel if you will and it really makes it easy for our clients to to execute against their goals in a way that makes sense for them as their budgets allow. Right. No, I think that's awesome. The, that, that model also would let you then sort of really focus down and window down and get uh, very, very opinionated on your strengths as well. Right. Yeah. So that's, that model allows you to really dig into the service delivery side of the conversation, which I think, a lot of smaller businesses, when they open up, they're like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do this because I love doing this. And the answer for them more often than not is, yeah, but you can't do that anymore because you've got to go do all these other things. You've got to go do finance. You've got to go do marketing. you got to do. Yeah. So I think, you know, that that approach works. Uh, but you said something there that I think is also really important, and that is that you had the capital to do it. Right. You you tried to bootstrap it yourself with, you know, an in-house sales team. And then that capital infusion is really what allowed you to 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 do that. Had you not had that, how would you have made that journey? I mean, it's an interesting kind of yeah, supposition. I think the the financing part of it allowed us to bring in other partners that can do other things that we can't do. So we can expand our service offerings. Um you know, but we were able to outsource our sales. And so that was going really well. And I think if we hadn't had, you know, the introductions or the financing to kind of start networking in that way, we probably would just specialize in what we do and do it really well. Right. And then along the way, as you do, I mean, I just had an email yesterday from um, an owner of an SEO company. And she was like, hey, like, this is what I do. Do you guys do partnerships or referrals um, because we don't do SEO for our clients, right? We'll design the landing pages and things like that, but we're not an SEO firm. And so we're getting more kind of people in our quote unquote Rolodex that we can then say to our clients as our brand managers are coming on and they're taking over more of, you know, that strategic role with our clients to say, what is everything that you're doing? And like we've kind of done the due diligence of looking at these people's performance and their agencies and how they're set up and their pricing structure and making sure it makes sense before we recommend them. But, you know, I I think it naturally would get there without the financing, just because I think more and more people are realizing you're going to burn out if you're all things to all people. And it's a lot easier. You know, we were talking before the call, it's a lot easier to bring your skills together and amplify what you do. And it's so much more impactful with less stress because you're not trying to learn SEO and do SEO and and also do social and also do, you know, all of these other things. It's like, we understand businesses need all of these things. We also understand we can't be that for every single business. And it's a little delusional to think that you could, in my mind. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it's really just about building that trust and building that um, two-way reciprocal, you know, relationship with some of these other companies that they want to succeed too. It matters to them to perform. And so if we all perform, we're all doing well and then our budgets go up and everybody's happy and we get to do more of what we love. So, so how does that approach inform 
your go-to-market strategy for how you're delivering your stuff? Like as a marketing manager for the organization, what do you kind of take off your plate now? And what have you put on maybe that fills that sort of niche? That's a great question. <laughs> it's been an it's been an evolution for sure. Um, you know, when I first started here, I was really focused on um our social presence. I was focused on our website. Uh, I was focused on sales materials. That's evolved a bit. Um, I recently, in the last kind of, I guess, phase, was really focused on trying to get SEO up so that we could start to get found for more than thing, you know, more than just AI or AI advertising in our name. We're lucky to have that name. I think right now with the boom of AI, we we got that name before you know ChatGPT came out. So um, it definitely helps with getting found. Um, but like I said, we're focused more on building through relationships and kind of the referral networks that we have and um, through our clients and doing really well with them so that they give us a, more of the word of mouth. Um, obviously, we have the sales organization that is outsourcing people that or organizations that meet our, you know, ICP and they meet all the criteria of where we can really help and we can really make a difference. Um, and so, you know, we're, we're going that route. We've gotten, you know, a lot of clients from that, but then, you know, equally from our investment partners or our um, sister organizations that have clients that they can't meet the need of advertising for, and they'll introduce us. And so the go-to-market strategies changed a bit and, in how we're positioned. Um, my role has evolved from doing stuff for our brand to now I'm really focusing on um, kind of the partnership side of it. So we have a partner called Brinks TV. Um, we're doing a lot with them. We're bringing on other partners through them. And so I'm kind of the liaison between the two organizations and trying to make sure that we're all streamlined. And I set up Monday and automations and like making sure that all of the different tasks are, are documented between teams because, you know, they have a lot that they need to do. We have a lot that we need to do and a lot of it overlaps. And so right now my focus has been more on how do we make this integration as seamless as possible? And then I'll be working on, you know, a lot of their marketing materials. And so I'm kind of stepping into almost a, a director of marketing for them, um, generating email campaigns and ideas and um, running their advertising and everything that I was doing internally for our own business. I'm now kind of doing more collectively for the partnerships. So it's definitely. <laughs> that sounds, uh, sounds challenging, right? The, yeah. What is it like to balance all of those things? You know, you've got Meditate your own, that. your own, yeah, right? You've got your own brand. You've got your own messaging. Then you've got you know multiple partnership brands and messaging. Uh, are there places where those messages conflict? Uh, they don't necessarily conflict because it's so. Brinks is a place where we would purchase uh, advertising, right? So it, it's kind of like a media channel for us. And so a lot of the times it's, you know, it's just an added bonus to what we're already doing. Um, for them, it goes the other way, right? So they're bringing on sponsors that are doing just uh, advertising on their platform, but they maybe want to do extra things. And so mm. we'll be brought in to do more of the traditional advertising, search, social, over the top, that kind of, that kind of thing. Um, the content is very... I think it it makes sense, right? Like it's like what we do and this is part of it, right? Um, but I think when it comes to like understanding what to work on, I had to have kind of a come to Jesus with myself because I want to do good at all of it. It's not possible, again, to do good at everything when you have too many things to do. And so I really look at what are the projects on my plate and what is the impact that it's going to have on the bottom line? Because I realized pretty quickly, like my social media, which is taking up, you know, hours of my week is not actually bringing in any leads. It's not actually closing any business. It's actually not contributing to making money. And I'm spending a lot of time on it. And so that was something that I basically just dissolved because I was like, I like, 
at this point of where we are, we're not big enough. We're not, you know, we don't, I don't have a social media team. Um, but now with this partnership that we have, it's possible that they'll take that over. So I think it's looking at everything that you have and understanding where are we going as a business? What are the goals and priorities? And then looking at all of your projects to say, how do they line up with that? And how am I impacting that on a daily basis? And then you're just going to have to either delete it, delegate it, or like delay it because otherwise it's, it can be really overwhelming. <laughs> awesome. Victoria, I want to thank you for being on the show today. But before we go, I have a couple quick questions for you. Uh, first things first, who should reach out to you and how can they get a hold of you? Uh, anyone who is an advertiser, honestly, um, spending at least $100,000 a year, that's where we really can make a difference. So anybody spending more than $100,000 a year on paid media, um, anyone who is looking for, you know, incredible branding, our, our agency has an amazing history of branding and environmental advertising and things like that. Um, so if you're a marketer who just wants to do it better. Um, we use a lot of data to inform what we do. It's obviously AI generated. Um, we build personas based on your audiences so that we know who we're talking to and what audience is going to make the most difference. And then we try to find more people like them. Um, so if that's your jam, reach out to me. My email is victoria.richardson at AIadvertising.com. You can go to AIadvertising.com and fill out a, uh, what is it called? A form on our website, contact form on our website. Um, reach out to me on LinkedIn, Victoria Richardson. Uh, that's probably the best way to to get a hold of me at this moment. We'll put, we'll put links down there. And okay. For, for everybody that's <laughs> like me, who's like, I'm driving around and don't have a pen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. We'll, we'll get it all in there so you can click on it when you're done. Um, okay. And as we wrap the the last question and, and one of my most favorite in your marketing journey and the quest to become the marketing guru you are right now, <laughs> what are the three biggest things you've learned so far? The three biggest thing is I've learned. Uh, everything changes. Don't get attached. <laughs> um, that's a that, really sounds, big... that sounds transcendent. Yeah. <laughs> You know, in my journey, it's like I get really excited about things. I'm a, I'm a certified in Colby, and it's like how you spend your mental energy. And so, I'm a quick start. So for me, it's like everything new and exciting and change for just change sake. I love that. So, but I realize that's not everybody's cup of tea. Um, so I think it's important because things are obviously rapidly changing, and especially with AI coming on, it's like you know, ChatGPT was the greatest and now there's other tools out there and there's other systems. And so just kind of being flexible and experimental in what you do, um, I think is a really important lesson for any marketer. Uh, networking, I think is a really great thing. Um, again, I don't, I don't subscribe to you can do everything alone or you that you should do everything alone. I think building trusted networks and people that you can bounce ideas off of and people that you can leverage and refer to, I think is a really great thing to do as a marketer. And then the last thing I think is being resourced. Um, because, you know, as marketers, I think a lot of times we're relied upon to be creative and we're relied upon to come up with ideas and we're relied upon to execute those ideas. And there's a lot of burnout because people aren't prioritizing and they're not prioritizing themselves and their own self-care. And and I think that's a huge part of being successful in general, but I'm only speaking from the marketing lens because that's what I do, right? We often are changing tasks and changing priorities and changing directions. And, and that can get really overwhelming for your system if you're not grounded and resourced and rested. Um, and then your mind doesn't work well. So I think those are my, my three. That's awesome. <laughs> I want to thank you so much for being on the show today. Um, and I definitely want to hear more as you learn and grow and develop and see what other partnerships you can add to the mix. Yeah, I'm excited about it. Thank you for having me. This was so fun. Thank you.